gonna waste any of you guys' time, so let's jump right in, start color grading like a pro. So I'm here in DaVinci Resolve. First thing I'm gonna do is convert my log footage to Rec. 709. You guys don't have to be using DaVinci Resolve. For my workflow, you can really use any editing software you want to. But when converting your log footage, whether it's Sony, Canon, Panasonic, whatever, make sure if you're not using a color space transform, you're using the lookup tables provided by your camera manufacturer, or you have one that is specifically converting from the color gamut or color space you shot in to Rec. 709. Here, I shot in Panasonic Vlog, and then we're gonna convert to actually DaVinci Wide Gamut here. Now, I'm using DaVinci Wide Gamut because when using the tools in DaVinci Resolve, they're gonna be a little less destructive when using DaVinci Wide Gamut, and it is a color space that is significantly wider than pretty much anything else available right now. Then we're gonna go ahead and add another node, and I'm creating kind of a color space transform sandwich here. I'm converting into DaVinci Wide Gamut, gonna paste that other node settings here, that other color space transform settings, and then we're gonna convert out to Rec. 709, and then this is really important here, Rec. 709A. Now Rec. 709A is a specific output gamma for DaVinci Resolve on Apple products or on MacBooks. It took me forever to figure out why my colors were ending up washed out. Darks weren't as dark as I remembered from my monitoring in the software to when I was exporting it. This will save you a ton of headache later. Now to match this, you wanna make sure your color management settings are set accordingly to that. DaVinci YRGB, Rec. 709 Scene, and then Rec. 709A for output color space. Make sure we save that. Cool, now we're ready to go. First thing I do is I start with a lookup table. Just a little bit of one. Whoops, I want that before. And I actually use a film stock that emulates Kodak 2383. Now this is specific to be used in DaVinci Wide Gamut. It was actually made by another YouTuber. I'll go ahead and link uh, his free lookup tables down below. Now Kodak 2383, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is a very common film stock used in Hollywood. One of my favorite directors, Christopher Nolan, actually uses this and shot most of his movies to this film stock. He's one of the few directors that actually still shoots to film. He shot Inception on it, Dunkirk, Dark Knight, dude pretty much all of his films. And I like using it in the DaVinci Wide Gamut format here because when I reduce the gain output, I don't have to use the entire lookup table. I can just drop it down to like 0.5 so it's not as intense without it affecting the color space actual transformation after to Cineon or Rec. 709. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually add kind of a filmic curve to complement there, just a nice S curve. Now I should've done this before, but I'm gonna find a little bit better of a hero frame. I wanna find where I can see a lot of darks, a lot of lights. You know, maybe a little back here. That's gonna be good. Let's do that. Then we'll go back and we're just gonna raise the darks a bit. I'm gonna, so we got the highlights down, brights where they should be. We're gonna bring darkness down a tad. And then we're gonna bring those highlights back up. Just add a little bit of contrast in there. I'm gonna hit Command D to see what that's added. Cool, looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and add primaries here. We're gonna use all of our wheels. I actually wanna bring that down a little bit darker. We're gonna bring the gam up just a little bit too. We just was shot direct sunlight and there's definitely a ton of contrast already there, but you know, with a log, you could pull a ton out of darks and a ton back from brights. Perfect. Now, now that we have kind of the exposure set exactly how we want it, we have some spread on the contrast. I'm actually gonna try and white balance this a bit. I do believe that this was actually shot pretty good, but we're just gonna go through and check. There's a few ways you can kind of make sure that everything is white balanced correctly. I'm gonna look in the shadows here, and if you look down in the vector scope, you can actually turn on your skin tone indicator, and then you also wanna turn on your display qualifier focus. This is gonna allow you, when you select qualifier, to hover over different areas of your frame, and that's gonna show basically the respective color down in your uh, scopes or your vector scope. So here we're in the shadows, and you can see that's almost right there in the crosshairs, which is where we wanna see our darks and our highlights if it's completely neutral. If it was over the blue here, you'll see when we're over in that darker area, it's over to the right. That's not what we want. So this actually looks pretty good to me. Next thing we can actually do is we can hover over any kind of skin tone if there is some in frame. And you can see that those actually do follow that skin tone indicator down here real nicely. So I'm gonna leave this frame and not white balance it at all. What I am gonna do though is I'm gonna add kind of a Promist look. Now Promist filters bloom highlights. Typically you put them on the outside of your lens. This is kind of an after the fact Promist filter. So in DaVinci, there's an awesome effect called glow. We're gonna add that right here. Off the bat, it's a little bit intense. You have different ways of compositing it. A lot of people like using soft light. I find that it can add way too much darkness into the darks. So I'll actually use screen here. And you can see what that's doing to the highlights. I'm actually gonna turn down the opacity and you can play with this. You can change the spread but I kind of like actually where it is right off the bat. Might turn it actually up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Bring the opacity down a tad. Nice, now we're cooking. So you can see, 
what that's done. And then that node we were gonna white balance on, I'm actually gonna start pushing in a little bit of a grade. So we have everything kind of neutral, we have everything spread out exactly as we want it. I'm gonna start pushing in to kind of complement what is already in the scene. So if you look in the background here, you'll see that there is kind of a bluish haze. And in the highlights, it does appear like there is a bit of an orange. This was shot, I think, late afternoon, if I remember right. So we're gonna lean into that. I'm gonna push a bit of blue, more blue into the darks. And I'm gonna put some warmth into the highlights. Maybe a little bit of gamma too into the highlights. More blues down there. Let's push some more warmth into the highlights and some more blue into the darks. Let's see if we go a little further. I like it. And some gamma. There we go. That's the stuff. We are almost there. Last thing I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure that I have my brightest brines and my darkest darks with no color tinge. I find it gives your image much more contrast, much more pop, it just looks great. I had this after the color space transform when it's become your image has become Rec. 709. We're just going to go back to our curve here. We're gonna go to our Luma versus Saturation. We're gonna pull down those blacks. We're gonna pull down the whites. And you should be able to see a little bit the sky is going from that kind of orange to more of a white. And then same with the blacks down here. That's pretty much it. That's our frame. Cool, next clip. Quick pause from the video, guys. Check this out. If you guys care about your gear as much as I do, and you put your camera gear through just as terrible situations that I find myself in, I hope you don't. You need to protect your glass. Dust, fingerprints, scratches, you name it. That's why I designed and printed these ND filter covers. They're incredibly durable, they're soft to the touch, they pop on with ease, allows you to easily take your ND caps off while keeping them protected, and then you can screw them right back on just as easily, as well as my rear lens caps. These are awesome, they pop off, you can get them on and off one-handed, no twisting, bam, boom, done. If you guys care about your camera gear just as much as I do, go to projectnarwhal.com, get yo today. Back to the video. This is towards sunset, a little bit of a different composition, the lighting's quite a bit different too. So we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna convert our footage from log to Rec. 709. What am I looking for? Color space transform. Panasonic V gamut and the Panasonic V log. Then we're gonna do DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate. I'm gonna copy those settings, paste those here. Swap those and then we're gonna rec 709 it and we're gonna rec 709A it. Perfect. I'm gonna add that Kodak 2383, Mr. Christopher Nolan. And let's actually do the D65. I find the D60 is a little bit, so D65 usually looks a little on the cooler side, but here it might be a little bit cooler. Let's just go with it anyways. Why not? I'm gonna add a film curve in here as well to kind of complement that. You know, this is a little hot, I wanna bring that down. Do 0.6 on this one. We'll make it a little higher than the last. I'm gonna pull up those blacks just a tad, pull down the highlights, and then I'm gonna bring the darkness down a bit too on the low end. I kind of want this to look more like a silhouette here. I don't really want to have too much information on the shadow side of the subject myself. Let's go ahead and hop over to the primaries. Let's bring down the darks more. Might be a little much. Let's try that. And then let's bring up the mids a bit. I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a tad too. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and do a white balance here. Now this might actually be okay as well. If we check the black here, down a little bit to the bottom right. It's a little towards the blue. So I'm actually gonna go over to my offset. I'm gonna push a little bit of warmth in there to see if we can move that up to the top left. Now let's check that a bit. So that looks a little more neutral. Let's push the offset a little bit more. I think. Looks like we're a little more neutral here. So that's before, after. We could have gotten some of that blue from the lookup table there, from that Kodak 2383 D65. Awesome. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add that blooming of the highlights using the glow. Love it, let's bring that down just a little bit. Kinda like where it is right now. Yeah, let's leave that. We're going fast at it. I like it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna add a window. I'm gonna add a gradient window here. I wanna have the focus of the frame to be a little bit more on the subject here. So hit Shift H and see what your windows are focusing on. Basically what is gray is not gonna be focused on. So hit Shift H and then I'm gonna bring this down with this curve just to have a little more focus there. 
maybe a little less, cool. Let's go ahead and push a little bit of a grade in here. So towards sunset, we do have a lot of warm sunlight because it is golden hour, and then a lot of blues in the shadows. So we're just gonna follow along with that kind of orange and teal sort of look. So we'll push some blues into our shadows. We're gonna push some warmth into our highlights. Maybe more blue than, yeah, there we go. Add some contrast and some pop. Last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and desaturate the highlights and the darks. Up over to our Luma versus saturation. We're gonna hit shift and click so that we don't move it too much. And actually, I don't wanna pull too much out of the top here. I kinda like a little bit of that warmth. So you can see it is just pulling it a little more towards the white. I like that, it looks good. Good stuff, I like it. All right, next clip. This last clip, got my boys here. We're gonna start off just like we have been. We're gonna go to a color space transform. Ooh, I like it. Shot in that Panasonic V-Log on the Lumix S52X. Convert that to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Awesome, copy that, add a new node, swap that bad boy around. Rec 709, then we're gonna do Rec 709A. Perfect. And it already looks pretty good right off the bat. It's such a cool day because we had clouds up in the mountains just coming through, just making it like a really ethereal and super dope. Gonna add our lookup table here. Kodak 2383, DaVinci Wide Gamut. Let's do the D60 on this one. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's good. You know what, on this, I might have a little bit higher than normal. It's 2.7. Yeah, I like that. Then we might make our film a curve, or S curve here. Let's make that probably a bit less intense. I'm gonna bring the darks down. Brights up a bit. Yeah, that's good. Right there. Let's go ahead and touch our primaries a bit. Bring that down. Let's push our gamma up a tad. Kinda wanna bring our highlights. Let's try that. I like it. Awesome. Let's make sure we add that glow. These days, throwing glow on everything. Especially in harsh light, it really gives kind of an effect of rolling off those highlights so they don't look so harsh in just direct sunlight. Looks pretty nice. This one here, ooh, it's a bit intense. Let's take that down. This is not too, too, too crazy, so I'm probably gonna leave that just as it is actually. No, let's leave that. Yeah, that's good, cool. So now let's move into white balancing our footage. Now we can come in here, we can hover over skin tone, we can see that it looks like it's a little bit towards kind of the yellow, so we might push a little bit of magenta purple into it, just a tad. Check John over here. It looks like he's a little bit towards the yellow as well. It's actually, I think, right on the money. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're actually gonna push in a grade using a qualifier. So I'm gonna select our skin tone, hit Shift H just so I can see what we're actually selecting here. And if we drag this down, we can see that we're selecting a lot of that skin tone there. That's what we want. I'm gonna actually use a window here too so that it's just selecting outside of our subjects, or in this case, we're selecting our subjects so we can later select outside of them. Bring that up a tad. Nice. So then, if we hit Command-O, you'll see that we're just selecting outside of our boas here. So then if we push some blues into the shadows, just to add some separation. Nothing too, too crazy. Maybe bring the exposure down a little bit around. Yeah, that's the money. So you'll see there, it just makes them pop from the frame just a little bit. We might actually add in another window here. Let's bring that exposure down there. We'll adjust this window a bit more. Pull it in so that it's a little tighter. And that just makes these guys pop ever so slightly more. Draws the eye, direct center there. And that's the last shot, guys. See you guys in the next one. Peace. It's not it. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it, dog. That ain't it. Budge.